All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Colin LeMayhew. I'm excited to be here talking at this conference today, telling you about Nano. So at a high level, um, Nano is designed to be a decentralized global currency trying to do instantaneous transactions um, at zero fees. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background about why I work on this project, what we're trying to do, and you know where we want to go in the future. So I started working on cryptocurrency back in 2009, or I, I was first introduced to it when I saw a news article about Bitcoin. I was very excited about it. I thought it'd be great. You know, we're going to have digital money. This is going to be amazing. And I, I backburned the idea for about five years or so. I just worked on other projects. And then I saw another news article about Bitcoin, and I, and I kind of wondered what the state of it was. So I started doing a little bit of digging to figure out you know, where it was, and I identified what I thought were two issues that needed to be improved really in order to make Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency work as a transactional currency. Um, one was I thought it had a high operating expense to run. It was expensive to run the network. And two, I thought it had a problem with high throughput. If the system was to scale, it, it would need to be designed slightly differently. So at that point, I set out to try and solve those two problems and design the system differently. So that's when I started working on Nano. Um, a little bit of background as to why I work on this project at all and what value I think cryptocurrency offers to the world. I think um, the most valuable thing that cryptocurrency offers is its decentralization and the fact that there aren't gatekeepers limiting who can participate in the system. I think that the ability to transfer and store value is something every person in the world should have access to without limitations. And along the way, if we can improve the efficiency over the way that things are currently done, you know, with banks and, and transferring money, that's an added bonus. So Nano was created and we are working to solve the real world problem of inefficiencies related to moving value around the world. There's a lot of experiments going on in cryptocurrency. Um, some are going to succeed, some, some won't succeed, but everyone's trying to push the boundaries in, in different areas. And where Nano is trying to push the boundary is making a global transactional currency that is instant and has no fees. So what makes Nano kind of unique in the cryptocurrency space? What, what's, what's the value that we offer? Um, from a technology aspect, what, what we think we have to offer is we have solved what we think is the high contention problem. When you have a lot of people working on the same program, it, it creates a lot of contention and that contention makes it slow. And that's what we have designed into the protocol, a way that no matter how many people are in this system, it doesn't create this contention. So. There's no protocol, there's no speed limit in the protocol. It's limited only by the hardware that it's running on. And that's what Nano has to offer. So we're trying to keep the protocol as, as small and as focused as possible. Smaller systems, um, they're easier to analyze, they're easier to spot bugs, there's less things in being introduced. Um, a lot of projects out there are adding a lot of features to things. We, we get a lot of feature requests and quite frequently we are we're saying no to feature requests because we're, we're focused on the one goal of making value transfer as fast and as efficient as possible. While also remaining um, decentralized and free. So a little bit about what the background of how Nano came to be. So we, a lot of people assume that Nano was an ICO and we actually weren't. We, we gave out all the Nano for free through the faucet. We, we never took in money for the Nano coins um, and it was given out for free. And actually that, that helped our adoption a lot. It, it gave us a very great community of people who um, loved talking about Nano, told all their friends. Um, many were keeping the coins, some were just selling them immediately. Um, to, to subsidize their income, but it, either way, it, it really helped spread the word of Nano probably more than a lot of other currencies of our size and at, at the time. 
eventually we had to wind that down last year in October, we um, shut off the faucet. We, we destroyed the remaining coins that weren't distributed, but we were very proud of the way that we did it. Um, we thought it was very interesting and unique and uh, thought it gave us a great story. So recently, what have we been re doing recently? We have been finishing up the mobile and desktop wallets. We're looking to get those released um, in the near future here. We've been doing a lot of node improvements, working on efficiency, um, working with exchanges and, and vendors, trying to make things easy to integrate. We recently rolled out Universal Blocks, which was a, a major protocol change. We're going to be enabling those for everyone shortly. Our near-term plans in the future, we're, we're working to try to get integrated into some more um, hardware wallets. We're working with point of sale vendors to, to see what their needs are in um, actually accepting a cryptocurrency in, in a place of business. It takes a lot of like getting used to, a, a, hopefully minimal training, but we're, we're working with them to see what we can do to integrate. Um, so some of the challenges that we've been working on recently, uh, again, our, our focus is to be a decentralized network. We're going to be stepping up efforts on, on making sure that people understand how to set up representatives, which is the unit of decentralization in, inside of Nano. We want to eventually be shutting off all the official representatives because um, decentralization means the most amount of people should be participating. We're going to be working on reducing network bandwidth, um, reducing vulnerability to spam attacks, basically everything that is needed to make the system more efficient and fast is, is what we're focusing on. So again, our, our long-term vision for what Nano is, is we, we want to be a, a global currency. We're, we're going to be pushing for as much adoption as we can. Uh, we think that we offer very good microtransactions. We're always going to be focused on having no fees to do transactions um, and, and instantaneous value transfers. So thank you. Um, I'm going to take some questions here, if I can. Do I have a time frame on when the wallets are going to be released? I am hoping that we're going to be able to do these in the next couple of weeks. We're waiting for our next node version to be complete. And after that, we'll be releasing those. Who are we marketing towards? Well, we're, we're trying to be a global currency. so. It, it's more a question of who are the best initial adopters. And it's going to be, since um, cryptocurrency right now in general, but also Nano has a high volatility in its price, uh, it's hard to go into a lot of vendors and have them use us immediately. So we need to go into places where people can accept the high volatility at the moment. Um, and also are just willing to work. They're more friendly to cryptocurrencies. So those are the type of vendors that we're looking for. And as we get wider adoption, it'll be easier and easier to go into more places. The, the volatility will level out because it'll be more useful and less speculative. And we'll just keep pushing from there. Um, about the universal blocks, what factors are influencing the calendar time on um, fully turning them on? So that's just a matter of, we actually have quite a few wallet users right now and they don't all use the, the node software. They, they've done their own implementation. So we've just been making sure that everyone is up to date and can generate the new universal blocks before we turn it all on. But we're actually really close. It's going to be soon. Um, okay, so someone commented about the full node using a lot of bandwidth. Yeah, right now, there it, it does use a lot of bandwidth, but we have a lot of really good ideas on how to reduce it. 
part of it is the fact that a, there's a lot of redundant information running right now. As kind of we've been stepping it up, we've been very, very conservative. So we've been broadcasting more information than we really need to. Um, so we, we're turning that down a little bit. We have ideas on making a new message type, which is actually about a third of the size or, or less. And that will that that greatly will decrease our vote traffic um, in relaying on that. So we have a lot of good ideas. Unfortunately, it just takes time. Um, we have to prioritize what we're doing. And you know, bandwidth isn't great to consume, but it, it isn't the highest priority currently. We're getting very close. So there's a lot of questions about um, partnerships. We we are talking with people about when that are very interested in nano. Vendors actually are very interested in the fact that we offer no fees. It's it's very, very different to, to offer something with a, even a half a percent fee versus versus no fees. So a lot of people are very, very interested in it. We want to make sure that we're putting our software out at the current time when it will work the best because because nothing would be more detrimental at this point than putting out software that they have a hard time integrating with or it it doesn't work to their expectations so we're we're making sure that the software works well before we push wide adoption because brand damage is worse than just waiting a little bit and doing it in time Do I intend to use YouTube more to present on Nano? Maybe, I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see, I'm all right at this, but. Um, how many people on our team are actively contributed? We, we have about, sorry, how many people are actively contributing to the Nano project currently? So we have about 12 to 15 people right now that are, very, very active on what we're doing. We're looking to get a couple more core developers. So if anyone knows someone that, you know, a lot of C++ and knows cryptocurrency consensus, send them my way. But we, um, we have people on our legal team that we're doing. We have people working on partnerships and, and everything like that. And then it totals about 12 people. Um, somebody asked, what's the cheapest and easy way, easiest way to run a node? I, I don't have the information on me right now, but if you, if you jump into our Discord channel, there are people that have set up very easy to deploy Docker containers, or Docker is actually probably the easiest way to set it up, but all those guys in the Discord channel can help you out. Um, they love setting up new representatives. Um, someone said to send people into Asia to promote it. We're actually working on getting a person that is going to be working in the in the Asian continent to help distribute there. And that's why I'm doing this conference too. We're we're definitely trying to get as many people on using Nano as possible. Um, someone asked, how much of a threat is the 51% attack um, if somebody got 51% of the voting power? Yeah, obviously, that's why it's very, very important to get our network decentralized and to have um, diff different representatives out there because that is, is definitely something that would be damaging. I, I think that one thing that Nano offers that it's it's a kind of a subtle point, but I think it's an important point compared to something like a proof of work where everything is generated in like a building or in a factory to generate the proof of work. 
nano, the unit of decentralization can be moved digitally. So if, if there's a problem in like a proof of work building, the, the building could be seized or it's like an, in one area. And if it's, if it's taken and corrupted, like there, there's nothing that we can do remotely about that. However, with nano, if one of the representatives gets corrupted, people can digitally move the representation somewhere else in the world. So it, it's impossible to actually contain the representatives or, or like seize them. Um, and I, I think that that's one nice thing about how we do that. What's our dream for Nano in five years? Well, we are trying to, to be a global currency. So a lot of that will be making sure that our, our software is in line is very, very secure because it needs to be trusted. Uh, one thing that comes up a lot about people outside of the cryptocurrency space is they don't feel the trust is there yet. They think that cryptocurrency is this very ephemeral concept. Um, it, they don't really understand it and they definitely aren't going to put a lot of money into it so that trust needs to be built it needs to be built over time and that's what we're going to be doing as much as we can when will we release version 13 we're actually pretty close to that i cut the stabilization branch uh, last night and we're having people in our discord test it you can definitely jump on. There's a Docker container for it, so you can um, pull version 13 directly. So more information, just ju jump into the Discord channel. Am I familiar with WeChat Pay and Alipay? Yes, actually. Those are very, very interesting, obviously, to us, because that's the type of thing that we want to get into. All, all of these payment systems, Google Pay, Facebook Pay, those are the kind of things, um, and these people are very, very interested in what we have to do. They, they like the scalability. They like the no fees. So it's just a matter of slowly and iteratively making our software better, and then we can integrate with them. So I think that's all I have right now, guys. I appreciate all the questions. So thank you very much.